Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's hearing on the proposed 2019 Department of Public Utilities operating budget. Before we begin, I do want to thank everyone in the department for their work and preparation uh, to get us to this point. Department of Public Utilities Director Tracy Davies, Deputy Director Ann Aubrey, Assistant Director John Lee, who will be presenting uh, the submission tonight, and also with us is Assistant Director John Ivanik. I really want to thank all those in the audience for being here tonight, as, though, as well as those watching from home. I also want to thank uh, the members of the public for their ongoing engagement uh, for this and the other budgets uh, as we've gone through this process on the council side. I do wish to remind those members of the public who wish to speak to fill out, please fill out a speaker slip before the public testimony portion of the hearing. The purpose of today's hearing is to review and comment on the proposed 2019 Department of Public Utilities operating budget, which is available online at www.columbus.gov finance. This hearing will be available to the public on the Columbus.gov YouTube channel and is currently streaming live online on the CTV website and broadcasting on Spectrum Cable and WOW on Channel 3 and AT&T UVerse Channel 99. Mr. Lee, are you ready? Yes, sir. Then I will now turn it over to Assistant Director John Lee, who will uh, provide tonight's presentation. Good evening, Council Member Cinziano and members of City Council. Thank you for allowing me to present the Department of Public Utilities 2019 operating budget. I'd like to first thank City Council for their support and passage of our 2019 utility rates, which provide the revenue to support this operating budget. I'd also like to thank our budget analyst, uh, John Lockman at Finance and Management for all his uh, hard work and assistance in helping us put together uh, this comprehensive budget. I do have a few slides uh, prepared to present our budget, uh, and after which I'd be happy to answer any questions. First off, I'd like to start out with a little overview of our budget. Uh, our total budget is $632 million. This represents a 2.1% increase above our 2018 budget. The budget includes not only our operating expenses, but also our debt service appropriations, and I'll get into some, some detail about that as I get into our water and sewer budgets. Uh, that debt service helps support our six-year capital program, which is about $2.3 billion. I touched on the rate increases as they do provide the revenue uh, on top of our base sales, which um, cover our operating expenses. Just a quick note about the size of um, and scope of the utility. We do serve over 1.2 million customers in the Columbus region, including the city of Columbus and the suburban communities and overlap some surrounding communities as well. When you look at some of the details, our operations and maintenance expenses, when you break down that 632 million, 366 goes towards those uh, costs, which represent about 58% of the budget. Those are growing at about a rate of 3.3% above 18 levels. And our debt service expenses, Quite sizable at 267 million, uh, about 42 percent of the budget. A uh, little bit smaller growth, about one percent. A couple areas that I will talk about um, are some personnel increases in Storm and the director's office. I'll start out with an overview of the director's office budget. Um, you can see there in the slide where. I show the 2017 actuals, the 18 budget, and the 2019 budget. This will be the, the format which I'll display all of the division budgets. Overall, you can see that uh, the director's office budget is increasing 7.9%. And the reason that it's increasing that much is we've added, we've made some changes where we've moved some employees from our permit office which were <clears throat> funded by sewers and drains and a portion of water. We moved those employees over under the director's um, authority um, and purview. And so that resulted in an increase in personnel, as you can see there, going from 21.3 million up to 22.5 million, about a 5.73% increase, uh, as well as parts and supplies increasing there in that budget um, associated with that move. Overall, you can see that our full-time employees will be increasing from 200, 207 full-time to 220, uh, and part-time employees, not much change there, a, a slight decrease. I noted there on the slide how the directors, the, the full $32 million is shared among the divisions in a percentage basis, 
uh, as detailed there, 6.1 from power, 38 from water, 43.5 uh, from sewers and drains, and 11.6 from storm. Uh, the next slide shows all of the sections that are funded by the director's office. We've, it's, it's quite a large operation with um, our, administ our administration, which includes our director, d deputy director, uh, our fiscal office, multiple offices, as you can see there, GIS, our sustainability, our recently added customer service. We added customer service into the director's office authority in 2018, and now the permits office will be effective in 2019. Um, it's a shared service. We looked at it benefiting multiple divisions, the permit office. It was better suited for the director's office. So that, that added $2.1 million is the main driver behind the increase. Uh, in, in the years past, we never did a vacancy credit. When I say vacancy credit is, is that kind of allows uh, you reduce personnel a little bit to account for some of the time in hiring people. Um, so you go in and you budget um, uh, at full strength or the strength that's in the budget, and then you discount it a little bit, in this case, 1%. So since we added customer service and permits to the office, there's more turnover there than some of the other divisions, so that was appropriate. Contracted services is one area in the director's office which um, has a lot of service contracts, ranging our banking contracts is probably the largest one in there, and our bill pay uh, services are, is another large amount. Moving on to the division of water, this budget totals $191 million, and that includes both operating expenses and debt service. Uh, overall, we're increasing about 1.9 percent above 2018 levels. Uh, they've, the Division of Water um, held expenses um, pretty low for 2019. You can see a decrease in parts and supplies as well as staffing costs decreased um, looking into 2019. Debt service was, didn't increase that much. As you can see, principal payments were pretty much level with a slight increase in, in interest. Uh, some of the uh, highlights, the budget for the Division of Water will support about 443 employees. Of those, we actually fund um, some custodial staff that is on the um, authorized strength of finance and management. This is overall continuation budget for the Division of Water. There's no major programmatic changes um, on board. I, I will talk about AMI. That's, that is a, a meter changeout program. But beyond that, really, it's, it's still a continuation budget. A 2% vacancy credit is applied in, for the Division of Water. And if you look at all of our divisions, uh, the vast majority of, of employees are in the water distribution, the people out in the field who are fixing water lines, uh, repairing leaks, and those also those folks that are our treatment plants, which operate 24 hours. We have operators there around the clock monitoring um, production and treatment. Debt payments, as I mentioned, 45 percent of our budget. Um, here recently we've done major upgrades at our water plants. Um, I have a couple notes there about our Parsons Avenue water plant where we had a $61 million project and our Dublin Road Ion Exchange uh, project where we used a loan, so we have to pay that back, so that's why we have the continued debt service payments. The meter reading, um, what we're doing in 2019 is we will be, 2019 and into future years, is we will be replacing meters. Um, our goal is to um, swap out the older meters and with new enhanced meters that will give better reads. It will allow us to uh, turn on and turn off quicker and get more precision data for customers about if they have a leak, um, you know, pinpoint consumption for them to, to, to target where there might be a problem. Um, and so that will be about a $25 million program, which will be funded through capital dollars. But the operating budget does support a, a portion of that. Um, we're phasing out some of our meter readers, re, uh, reallocating them to some other areas in the division and supplementing that with uh, a contract um, a contract for meter reading services. So that will phase out as well as we get um, all these meters installed. 
chemical costs and electricity costs are one component that um, on the chemical side, we have seen a downtrend in, on those costs largely to, due to increased efficiencies from our upgrades. And electricity costs uh, are always a sizable item, in this case about $8.8 .8 million. Our pri priorities really have not changed. Again, you know, we have provide billions, 49 billion gallons of water a year to over the 1.2 million people in the region. Our water line replacement program will continue aggressively replacing water lines um, to the tune of about 30 million a year. I noted there all of the things that, you know, with the personnel, um, all of the maintenance items we have to do, all the lines that are part of our infrastructure, um, that this operating budget helps support the materials and supplies and equipment for us to go out and, and ma maintain those, those miles of water line, all those hydrants and storage tanks. We do have still some more water plant improvements, which, which we're uh, doing. Uh, we're moving into some more treatment processes, particularly UV disinfection and some hypochlorite conversion projects in 2019. Moving on to sewers and drains, uh, overall, not too much of an increase above 2018 budget, 1.8%. Uh, as you can see there, the staffing costs um, have been shaved down quite a bit. We see a reduction of 7.1%. That's largely because of the permit office being moved over to the director's office. Um, debt service is about 59% of the total budget. So uh, that's a little different than the water side. I think that they were about uh, in the low 40s. Sewers and drains has a higher level of debt due to its requirements to uh, complete the consent decree uh, order. Next slide, um, again, pretty much a continuation budget on the sewer side. Same vacancy credit applied as with water at 2%. Um, similar to water, we have the majority of our personnel at our water treatment plants and, and those folks that are out in the, in the operations, in the field operations. We have 159 employees there. Um, the supplies and materials costs are increasing a little bit. We do on the sewer side have chemical costs that, you, that we use to treat wastewater. Uh, one of those is polymer. We're seeing an increase in that commodity cost, so we had to, we had to budget for that. The contracted services amount Back on the slide there, you can see that our contracted services amount is, is 53 million. A lot of that is made up of, um, we have a pro rata share, which we pay to the general fund for services for um, various departments there that help assist us in uh, daily administration, as well as electricity costs um, for the division and internal bills for uh, Department of Technology and Fleet. Electricity costs, we have noticed, um, has been increasing, and we budget that in, um, we've budgeted for a 15% increase in 2019 as we brought the ores tunnel online, and due to a wet weather this year, we've seen quite a bit of an increase in our electricity costs in order to, to pump um, out of that tunnel. So we wanted to make sure we had enough authority uh, and preparation for 2019. Um, and the debt service, as you know, uh, is a component of the sewers and drains budget that's going to continue to fund Blueprint um, and all of our other large diameter projects, and as well as our smaller collection system projects going into 2019. Our priorities really don't change much in 2019. Uh, again, 67 billion gallons of wastewater treated uh, at, our, at our plants. Um, we are continuing to invest in, in tunnels to serve uh, growing development in the region. Blueprint, Blueprint Columbus, uh, targeting about 80 to uh, 100 million a year for that. Again, that'll be funded by our capital program, but there are operating expenses associated with that. Uh, we will be moving into design. We'll continue in Linden uh, and close out in 2019 with probably some bids for construction in Linden at that time as well adding some more capacity with our chemically enhanced tre uh, primary treatment project out at Southerly. And a note about all the, you know, the operating expenses for the crews who go out and maintain all of our miles of sanitary line there, 4,600 
miles of line there with combined sewers and storm sewers. Biosolids will continue to be, uh, and land application will continue to be a priority for us in 2019 in order to control and uh, remove, remove waste from the treatment process. Stormwater, uh, the overall budget increase for storm is 7.33%. We have uh, the sewer, the storm budget has been um, operating on about 16 to 17 personnel year over year. And so we are making efforts to, um, we're enhancing that operation and requesting some additional personnel there. Um, you can see our budget per staffing cost budget going from 1.9 million to 2.4. That will fund a couple engineers and a couple construction inspectors and a, a pre treatment analyst. We are increasing some support there to maintain compliance with our EPA requirements for our MS4 permit, which regards, uh, is regarding regulation of our stormwater system. And that's, a lot of that staff time is going to um, help, help maintain our compliance with the program and also work with other departments uh, in areas of post-construction maintenance, uh, technical elements, some oversight of the program and additional inspections. We don't apply a vacancy credit to the um, stormwater section just because we have not seen much turnover and they have a very limited staff. Uh, a large, 90, large portion, 96% of the overall budget, back to this slide here, is out of their services line, their O3 services line, $24 million there. And uh, probably more than half of that goes to our reimbursement to uh, Department of Public Service for their street cleaning and snow removal services. Um, why do they do that for us? Well, all those services help make sure that our storm sores are clean of debris uh, in order to convey the water to those, that infrastructure. We also, uh, the stormwater section also reimburses the sanitary section. They don't have very much staff there, whereas sanitary has design, uh, a design group and they also have a maintenance group, which uh, we pay them back for the support they provide. I talked about the additional personnel there. Uh, we are expanding our capital program uh, on stormwater, so we're likely to see a bit of an increase in debt service uh, going forward in 2019 and the future years. Uh, we're going to see some more detention basin improvements to control flooding, and we're doing a lot more storm sewer assessment associated with Blueprint. Priorities, again, back in the neighborhoods, controlling flooding uh, in residential areas. Again, uh, one of the big components of the stormwater section is making sure that we are enforcing and regulating any kind of illicit discharges uh, that, you know, people can, uh, businesses or whatever, they might not be aware of some of the, they, they may or might not be aware of the other things that they're putting down the storm sewer um, are illicit. And so, uh, we monitor that and sometimes have to enforce penalties if, if a case is found there. Our maintenance program is, is pretty robust. There is a lot of storm sewer out there, about 4,251 miles uh, to maintain. Some of that is combined as well. Green infrastructure, as Blueprint comes online, uh, we are, there is going to be a component that storm is going to be taking on as far as maintaining uh, that green infrastructure maintenance and we're still working on plans to uh, perhaps use some in-house staff and possibly supplement that with some outside uh, contracts. The final division is our division of power. And our division serves, um, oh, about 14,000 customers, uh, about thereabouts. And the majority of our budget, as you see there, is in parts and supplies, and it's $58.2 million. That is our purchase power cost. We buy wholesale power um, on the market at a fixed contract energy rate and then provide that and sell meter that through uh, to our customers. It is a little bit lower than 2018 just because what we do is lock in to certain rates uh, year over year. In 2019, fixed rates are lower than 2018 levels. 
capital outlay is a little bit higher for uh, division of power in that line. Um, the reason that we have a little bit more in there, up to 4.2 million, is because in addition to whenever we go out and replace water meters, we're also going, for, with the AMI project, we're also going to replace some power meters that are going to be, uh, that have enhanced technology. 2% vacancy credit applied uh, to the division of power. Uh, we actually are budgeting, budgeting them at full authorized strength, which I think is 104 full-time employees. Uh, we have been seeing quite a few uh, newly added customers on the residential side, and we're looking at adding a crew, an additional crew to provide that support and uh, for those customers, and so that's why we're going up to full authorized strength. No rate increases for 2019. Uh, I touched on the largest expense there for purchase power. Um, just to note that a lot of our resources, um, in supplies, materials go for the maintenance and energy for over 56,000 street lights. We are in the, in the as, as lights go out, we are replacing those with LED and we have uh, quite a few um, LED projects under our belt where we've actually installed, um, I think about $2.1 million worth of projects in areas that were unlit, we added LED lights there. And uh, some of our priorities, that's my final slide for the Division of Power, again, maintaining customers and adding new customers. Uh, continue to upgrade our street lights to LED, as I mentioned, upgrading our meters. Uh, the total cost for those, for those power meters, will, it, it's, it's not as much as water meters, it will be about $5 million. And we're also, we recently uh, received a grant uh, uh, which we have made available to families, uh, low-income families, for assistance in paying their power bills. And so far, we're proud to report that we've had 185 families uh, participate and we're able to provide some relief in the tune, to the tune of $23,000 there. We also have a good program, a rebate program, to uh, try and get folks to uh, who have electric vehicles to um, take advantage of the rebate we have for them to install a level two charging station. So after they make the cost, after they uh, in in incur the cost for installing that at their home, they can apply for a rebate of $500. So with that, Councilmember Stinziano, that will close my presentation. Uh, the 2019 budget, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Always appreciate your very thorough uh, presentation and uh, presenting the priorities of the department. Do have a couple questions. Uh, we started off talking about the amount of debt the department taking on is going to continue to grow as a result of consent decrees and maintenance of our aging infrastructure. Uh, just curious if you could share a little bit more how we plan to continue to budget uh, for those increases. Sure, absolutely. Um, as I mentioned, our, our total debt service is about $266 million for 2019. Um, whenever, we, whenever we look at our debt and we manage it, we project out about 10 years. Um, and we have amortization schedules, which go out, those, uh, go out about 20 years for every time we have an issuance. So we add that on. And then each year, what we do is we estimate how much more capital uh, projects and the estimated debt we can layer onto that existing debt. Uh, and so we take also our future operating budget and estimate, um, we, we look at what we've done in the past, you know, what our trends were, what our growth rates are for personnel, what they are for health insurance, and we, we forecast that out as well on top of uh, the debt. And so all those components are kind of mo modeled together in order for us to uh, forecast our rate increases. Appreciate the explanation. Uh, in your last slide, you mentioned one of the budget priorities is the LED conversion. Uh, could you talk a little bit about that conversion and also the timeline? It's one of the topics not only council members are very interested in, uh, sure. but the public uh, across the city. Uh, yeah, as I had mentioned, we, we have been doing, um, we have installed some new uh, LEDs in multiple neighborhoods, um, but we have a, a longer term plan where we would like to convert um, all of our streetlights to LED. Uh, it will take some time. Uh, the timeline of that will probably be, uh, 
it's really unknown, but it's likely to be maybe five, five years or more to, given the amount of funding that the Division of Power has currently, uh, that's, that's one of the limitations we have is somewhat of a limited budget, unlike water and sewer, so it's just going to take time. Um, but we are, we are committed to that, and, we can, and the, the benefits from that will, you know, it will save the, the division a lot in, in, in the form of efficiency from an energy cost standpoint, which we can pass on to our customers. Um, so I would say that our full conversion, we've done some estimates, it might cost about $45 million. So as you can see, that's a large cost for the division, uh, perhaps spending 5 to $10 million a year. Right now what we do, we do have a new consultant selected and on board with us. Uh, what they're going to do for us is develop an imp implementation plan uh, for the whole city that will kind of assist us in determining what kind of hardware and uh, control network we need in order to operate the system. And they're also going to design their first phase in the Linden area. Um, and so we're looking forward to that uh, as far as our LED streetlights. And my final question also uh, you highlighted as one of our budget priorities for the department, uh, and that's regarding our low income and senior resident discount program. Congratulations on the EcoSmart uh, grant. Uh, just curious what additional work or possibility there is to expand uh, the discount on residential sewer and water bill programs that we currently have and what impact, uh, if we do expand, could have on our budget either now or in the future. Sure. Our, our current budget impact, I, I'll just start with that, is um, it's about a million dollars. We, uh, the water, water and sewer low income discount uh, is a cost about five hundred and twenty twenty five thousand dollars and about five hundred thousand dollars for the senior discount. So if we were going to expand the program, you know, those costs could probably increase. But I think our goal, is, more importantly, is to get more participation. Uh, and so we are currently looking at our programs. We'll, we plan to look at those in 2019, looking at, at some best practices and what other communities have done. Uh, there's a lot of those types of programs around the country. And, you know, it could be where our thresholds need to be adjusted uh, to get more participation. We've seen relatively flat participation uh, in the low-income program. Uh, we actually have seen an increase in the senior side. So, um, and also looking at some of the, the roadblocks and, and getting some feedback from residents about, you know, what, you know, how did the process go? You know, what were, was there any, any, anything along the way that could be improved in getting you up and running on this program? Again, thank you, Mr. Lee, for the presentation and answering my questions. Uh, I have no questions or comments from my colleagues, and no one from uh, the public that's here tonight provided any speaker slips, so I will uh, provide closing remarks. Again, want to thank everyone from the public for taking the time to be in attendance tonight, and also those watching at home uh, for your participation in the hearing. I'd also like to take, uh, thank the Department of Public Utilities, Director Davies, and members of her leadership staff, Ann Aubrey, John Lee, John A. Vanek, uh, as well as members of the city staff, the fantastic city staff, Matt Erickson, John Oswald, Cole Voidach, and Kevin McCain. This information is very helpful as we continue to go through our budget process on the council side. I encourage those looking for more information to visit the Department of Public Utilities website at www.columbus.gov utilities or call 614-645-8276. If you're looking for more information on the overall proposed 2019 operating budget, Again, you can find that online at www.columbus.gov slash finance. My office is also always open and available. Contact me at 614-645-8084 or email at mstinziano at columbus.gov. Seeing no further questions or comments, this hearing is adjourned. <laughs>